Last year, I created this magnetic rotary encoding method. It was born from my need for a rotary controller that could fit into any of my projects. I wanted something that had a really high resolution and was also really cheap to make. Something that was customizable and extremely resistant to long-term damage. I used the same rotary encoding method to build the Hamsville dial which is a controller I use with many of my applications. This will also be the subject of my next video, so look out for that. A few improvements and refinements to the encoding method since its development has brought me to this. I designed this standalone encoder so you guys can easily integrate this magnetic rotary encoding method into any of your Arduino projects, should you find a need for it. It's mostly 3D printed, so it's easily customizable. I will be releasing the step files to help with easy modifications. The encoder is breadboard compatible and it can also be attached to anything using the three screw holes at the back. It features a ring of individually addressable LEDs and a capacitive touch button on the surface. I also wrote a fully comprehensive library for it with various examples to get you started so you can quickly and effortlessly integrate the encoder into any project. Speaking of projects, if your next one involves a PCB, I'll recommend you try out JLC PCB. You simply upload your Gerber files and submit it with all your board preferences. Your board design will be professionally checked by engineers for design errors and then put into production all within 24 hours. Depending on where you live, you can get your boards manufactured and in your hands in less than a week. I'll link to the website in the description. A huge thanks to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video. So, how exactly does this rotary encoder work? Well, the system uses two linear oil effect sensors to read the analog values on a ring of alternating magnets. The two sensors are placed with a separation angle that's determined by the number of magnets on the ring. This relationship can be calculated with these formulas. Say you want to achieve a base resolution of 60. The number of magnets to use will be 60 divided by 2, which equals 30 magnets. This is one of the pros of this magnetic rotary encoder. The base resolution is always double the number of magnets used. Anyways, to calculate the required angle between the all effect sensors, you simply put in the number of magnets and also an odd number for the multiplier. This value helps to control the separation of the all effect sensors without changing the desired resolution. In this case, the number of magnets is 30 and I'm using 3 as the multiplier. So the resulting angle is 9 degrees. All these calculations simply ensure that the actual detection function works exactly as expected. So, how exactly is rotation registered? Well, there are three distinct states on the ring of magnets. There is full north, full south, and a transition or neutral state, which is simply the center point between the north and the south states. These three states have distinct defining analog values. For full north, it's usually about 270. For full south, it's about 770. And the transition state is always around 512 for a 10 bit analog to digital converter. With these values, you can easily track the states and consequently track the rotation of the magnets. For instance, let's say the system starts in this position where the north pole is directly above the first all effect sensor. The second all effect sensor will have to be by relation in the transition state. So the value that will be registered on the sensors are 270 for sensor 1 and 512 for sensor 2. From these states, we can deduce the next logical state if the magnets were to move one step in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction. So if the magnet moves one step clockwise, then the registered value on sensor 1 would have changed to 512 and the value on sensor 2 would have changed to 770. If the magnet moved counterclockwise, 
then the new sensor values would be 510 and 270 respectively. From these values, you can see how a rotation step and its direction is registered. Keep in mind that these new values are registered as the new start position, so the system can properly detect the next rotation. The repetition of this process is how the rotation detection function is able to register continuous rotations in any direction. So use this function in Arduino. You first have to define a new magnetic rotary encoder object and also pass in the analog pins used for the Hall effect sensors. In the setup section, you simply initialize the encoder. The main loop is where you call the rotation detection function, which will return 1 for a clockwise rotation, minus 1 for a counterclockwise rotation, and 0 for when the encoder is stationary. So if you take a look at the serial monitor here, you can see the count changes as I rotate the encoder. And if I make a full revolution, the Arduino registers a resolution of 60, exactly as expected. Now, what I've described so far is the base foundation for this magnetic rotary encoder, but there are other inherited properties of this system that has enabled me to write some more advanced rotation detection functions. One of these properties is rotation speed or rate. It takes a certain amount of time to make a rotation step. This time is usually in the milliseconds range if you're rotating the encoder fast enough. By also registering this time interval between rotation steps, I was able to write another detection function that has a multiplier value that is proportional to the rotation speed of the encoder. The result is an encoder that also registers acceleration. This function is called Detect Rotation with Rate. If you take a look at the serial monitor, you can see that when I move the encoder at a relatively normal speed, the function returns single increment values as it did earlier. But if I start to rotate the encoder faster, the function also starts to return higher incremental values. This detection function is especially useful in scrolling type applications where you want to be able to scroll through a long list or timeline at an accelerated rate but also have the option to scroll step by step. The other property of the system is linearity. You might have noticed that whenever I refer to resolution, I always say base resolution. Well, that's because the resolution of this encoder can go as high as 4000 using this linearity property. If you take a look at the model again, you can see that between each logical rotation step, there is a linear transition region. So if we start from this position and move one clockwise rotation step, the analog values on the sensors will gradually change towards the next logical state. The resolution of this change is equal to the difference between the two analog values that defines the rotation step, which is in this case 770 minus 512, that is equal to 258. This value is theoretically the full resolution of a single step in this encoder. But remember, we have 60 logical steps in the encoder, so the full resolution of the rotary encoder is 258 times 60, which is 15,480. I know, it's pretty insane. Sadly though, this is only a theoretically achievable resolution. In practice, you only get about 25% of this value. There's a number of reasons why this is the case, but the major ones are the limitations in speed, precision of the Arduino's analog to digital converter, the less than perfect hand assembly of the system and the inconsistencies in the magnets themselves. So instead of representing each state with a distinct analog value, I define the states as a range of values. This significantly cuts down the full resolution of the encoder, but if you really think about it, 25% of 15,480 is still incredibly high. That's a resolution of 3,870 per revolution. There is absolutely no way you can move the encoder with that much precision. 
so 25% is still an overkill. To use this high resolution detection, you simply set the percentage of the resolution you want and then call the detect rotation HR function. If you then take a look at the serial monitor, you can see how fast the count increases and I'm barely moving the encoder. This type of detection can be useful when you want to achieve extremely granular control. So those are the three detection functions you can use with this rotary encoder. Let's do a final comparison between these three functions so you can get a better sense of the difference. I've written this little code that switches the detection function whenever I touch the capacitive touch surface on the encoder. I want you to pay attention to the serial monitor. We're going to see how many revolutions it takes for the count to reach 1000 using each function. First up is the normal detection. By my calculation, it should take about 17 revolutions to get to the 1000 mark. This is just plain step-by-step -step detection, so it doesn't really matter how fast or slow I rotate the encoder. Okay, the resolution won't change. As I predicted, it took 17 turns to get to 1000. I'll switch to the next function by tapping on the encoder. This detection function is the one that registers acceleration, so I should be able to get to the 1000 mark much quicker. I'm going to first rotate the encoder slowly and then gradually speed up so you can see how the count progresses. There, it only took 8 turns. Switching to the final detection function, which is the high resolution detection. In this mode, I don't even make a full revolution before reaching the 1000 mark. I think you can now see the difference between these detection modes. So that's pretty much all you need to know about the rotary encoder. I'll link to the GitHub repository in the description. I'll have more documentation there. So if you need more information, you'll find it there. Another feature of the rotary encoder that will come in handy is the capacitive touch. The surface of the encoder acts as a touch button and is able to register four touch input types. So you can either tap, double tap, short press or long press. All four inputs can be programmed to any action. It's all up to you. I have also written an extended library for the capacitive touch based on the original capacitive touch library written by Paul Badger and Paul Stoffigan. So it's also really easy to implement on any Arduino. You'll find more information in the video description. Let's take a quick look at the circuit. It's a fairly simple one. Here you can see the linear hall effect sensors. The output from the sensors is connected to ENC1 and ENC2 on the encoder's header. These pins should be connected to analog input pins on the Arduino. The same analog signals are connected to this comparator circuit. I am using the LM2901 quad comparator IC. The chip has four comparators built in, so I paired them and wired them as a window comparator for both all effect sensors. The digital output from the comparator is used to generate interrupts for the transition states for both all effect sensors. What this translates to is faster and accurate rotation detection. The outputs from this comparator are connected to two additional pins on the header, and these pins should be connected to interrupt-enabled pins on the Arduino. There is also a pin for the addressable LED ring and two more for a capacitive touch. Assembling the encoder is also really straightforward. These are all the parts required. A few 3D printed parts, 3 by one millimeter neodymium magnets, M1.4 by 8 self-tapping screws, 6906 bearing, a single wire and a 7-pin header. You will also need the encoder board and the capacitive torch pad, both of which you can get from my Tindy store. I'll link to it in the description. You don't have to buy the boards if you don't want. So long as you understand the system well enough, you can easily design your own. 
if you do decide to buy the bots from my store, thank you. You'll be supporting this channel. Here's a quick clip of the assembly process. I'll also link to the full instruction in the description. Thanks for watching. Until the next video. Bye.